Um, uh, my name is uh, Shu Hao, and uh, um, and I'm a computational mathematician. Uh, what does computational mathematician means? Uh, I play with computer. I uh, I mainly do my work on computers. I write um, computer codes, for example. Um, let me show. Uh, oh, no, not here. Uh, let me do most votes. For example, um, these are some public codes I wrote on computing some, this is called Coulomb potential matrix. Um, thank you. Um, and uh, um, these are some codes I wrote a year ago and on um, how to retrieve some quantum chemical um, properties of uh, um, let, let me make uh, Moses a co-host. How do I choose that? Make, make. co-host. There we go. Um, so this is what I do. And uh, um, today we're gonna learn how computer learns. All right. And uh, if you guys can, and if you guys and girls can open up um, this link. And if you have a Kaggle account, if you have a Kaggle account, um, right on top of this corner, Right on top of this corner, you see copy and edit. And you wanna click that. And after you click, so here I'm, I'm seeing an edit. You, what you will see is a black button. It says copy and edit. It needs a phone number. Um, that's right, because you need uh, to participate, um, I think I told, I forgot who I told, Allison um, or someone else in the email that um, we need a, a, a phone number in order that to run on Kaggle Cloud Platform. Every, everyone okay? Um, So if we do edit, I mean, you will do copy and edit and uh, um, I'm gonna do edit. Then we will enter this interface. And this is, this is uh, what we're seeing. Um, for example, this one is exactly like a dashboard of, uh, I put my phone number, it spit out some uh, weird JSON. Okay, David said, uh, I put my phone number and it spilled out some weird JSON. Um, okay. Mm. Let me try with, did that, that go back to the link? Okay. Mm. Let me try log out and uh, uh, let me try with the new account. Let me do register with my email and uh, let's do um,
Okay. Um. All right. Then uh, I'll be back. Um. Mm. Everyone good? Uh, where is it? All right. Uh, edit. It's blocked by uh, Go Guardian. David said it's blocked by Go Guardian. Um, can you see this interface? For example, uh, we can see a draft session. We can see our accelerator CPU, and uh, we can see our data. Uh, we can see our CPU count. We can see our Python. Uh, we can see our code help. Can you see this interface? Okay, so if, uh, uh, let me do a quick poll. I just launched the poll. Uh, if you can see interface, please uh, say yes. Oh, uh, majority is... Uh... Okay, so we have five persons, no. Yeah. I guess I should send out an email earlier about uh, setting up Kaggle, my bad. Um, so you have chance to, uh, go guardian is a web filtering service that my school uses. Uh, you have no, um, that's really interesting. All right. Um, let's just continue. Um, you can. I mean, this is uh, this is publicly available um, notebook, and uh, um, you can you can essentially view the material later that I'm about to uh, cover. So let let me first introduce uh, what is uh, the thing we're gonna do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna participate in this competition. It's called Dogs versus Cat. It says it's create an algorithm to distinguish dog from cats. All right. This is what we're going to do. And, and meanwhile, we'll, um, we'll learn some math behind it. So, and right here, all right, uh, we're in the notebook. Uh, you guys can see we have a menu. We have a, a file and we have edit, we have view and run and add-ons help. Um, so if we double click some text, for example, right here, if I double click here using my mouse, great, thank you, David. Um, if I double click here using my mouse, it will reveal the code that consists of a cell. And now if I hit right here, if I hit wrong, it will render the code I wrote um, to text. David asked, is this like cells in Colab? Exactly. This is exactly like the cell in Colab. And this is called a markdown cell. For example, um, if I double click, I just double clicked here. All right. I just double clicked here. And 
you guys can write whatever you want. For example, um, if I want to use headers, I can type pound. And uh, um, this is like, uh, for example, headers and say hello. And uh, I can do even if I do triple pound, um, it will become smaller header. All right. And we have two types of cells. Um, the other, the other is the code cell. For example, um, first we can tell the difference that some of the keywords are highlighted. For example, we have a print. This is a this is a command uh, from Python, and it prints if we put double quotation mark here, right here it will print whatever in the double quotation mark. We hit this run button uh, right on the left of the cell, it will run. It will print in an output. So this, this is an output of this. For example, we can print more. We can print, hello world. And I'm using a keyboard shortcut if you want to become a coder, uh, you can use keyboard shortcut. Here, uh, you can use control and enter, uh, press control and enter at the same time, you will get uh, something. And some advanced, maybe I can see F, uh, F means format. Uh, for example, hello world. Um, uh, so time is, maybe say time is three right now. Three o'clock, let's do. So this is a, this is a um, print command. And in order that um, the computer learns things, we have to first represent things in computer. The first, this programming 101 is we introduce some variables, for example, um, when we want to solve the equation, and by the way, if, uh, uh, if I have a pound sign here in the code cell, it means this, everything I wrote after the pound sign will not execute it as a code. This is called a comment. This is a comment. And now, for example, um, I want to represent some X variable, like uh, um, we solve in the equation three times X equals five, all right? So for example, if we solve this equation, we'll get uh, X is uh, three divided by five. And, and once we do that, our computer our computer knows this X is three over five. Example, if we start a new cell, we can click this plus code right here. If we put an X here, oh, it becomes uh, uh, with uh, 1.6 and with a, some rounding error right here, okay? Because computer represent numbers, it cannot represent uh, um, a number with infinitely length. Uh, so X is known by the computer, but if we type Y, if we type Y here and we hit wrong, oh, Python will complain. It says name error, uh, name Y is not defined. It's because computer does not know this Y here. It's like, this is a property of the computer programming. Um, you have to tell the computer explicitly everything. Um, for example, now, if I assign y to be x plus two, then it is okay. And if we check, um, let, let's check uh, y equals x times three. And now, and then we print the y. As we can see, y will, uh, we, if three x is five, um, x is five thirds, and y equals x times three, 
going to be magnifies a bit. Um, then why will become five again? Okay. And Python is actually the words I believe it's uh, the. I mean the handiest calculator. If, uh, for example, if we want to compute, we can do print, and if we want to compute two to the fifth power, it's thirty-two. By the way, we use uh, double asterisk, so double star. If we do this, double star means exponential. We just take exponential. Um, out of two, this is basically two raised to the fifth power, and we'll get thirty-two. Okay, we can do something else. For example, we can do. Um, and by the way, um, is triple star equals titration? I haven't tried that. I don't. I I believe we don't have titration in uh, in in Python built in, but we can definitely define that. Is it? Okay, invalid syntax. Sorry, David. Python will complain, but we can we can definitely customize um, this one. But it's pretty advanced. We can customize the behavior of triple star. But right now, it's uh it's not valid, and it follows. By the way, it follows everything we learned in algebra. For example, the order of operations. Um, if we want to do two raised to the third power um, times three, um, this one will compute uh, uh, the exponential first, two to the three power, uh, two to the third power first, and then which will get eight. Then eight is multiplied with three. So the second print will print twenty-four, which is three times twenty-four. Let's try another. For example, if we have, um, let's say, one divided by two plus one. Again, this forward slash is division. Um, it is pretty much so. Uh, one divided by two is computed first, and then plus one. Um, computed secondly, and we'll get one point five. So let me add a comment. Unfortunately, um, tration is not built in Python. All right. Next thing.、Um, This is essentially computations. Next thing we're looking at logic. So the computer is is good at two things. It is good at computation and logic representations.、Um, so computer is good at、uh, many things human cannot do. For example, fast calculations. But、uh, um, but recognizing objects. At least ten years ago, it's a very hard task for computer to accomplish.、Um, so let's uh, uh, let's browse this uh, uh, dog versus cat computation.、Uh, that's how I'm not a robot works. Yes, we're human. So somehow we have all these knowledge in our head. You know,、uh, can convert what we see as abstraction, and our brain tells us, "Okay, this is this is blue. This is a color. This is a cat."、Um, but we we are not able to do that. We we are not able to do that when we were born.、Um, we have to experience everything before we can tell. Oh, this is a cat. This is a dog.、Um, So first, I want to acknowledge the data set. The data set is basically from PetFinder.com.、Um, people uploaded cat and dog pictures, 
and uh, um, it helps us to find the last pet. So we essentially do good um, to uh, petfinder.com by participating in this competition. Um, okay, let's back here. Um, first, let's introduce, uh, uh, so here I add a comment here, is double equal versus equal. So in computer, in, in Python, um, equal and double equal are different things. For example, here I let A equals two. This is called assignment. Um, this is we let A be two. It's like A is a variable and now it has value two. For example, I can see, I can see type of A a is an integer, int in computer means integer. And I can see, for example, uh, Python has some uh, filtering command called dir. And I can see some, uh, uh, these are some, what's called method associated with this variable. But uh, uh, let me just clap this. Um, so A is after the equal, a is known by the computer, but the equal equal is totally different. The equal equal, uh, equal equal is checking whether a variable is equal to, it's like asking a question, it's equal to uh, whatever on the right side of uh, equal equal. For example, I can ask Python. I'll ask Python. It, it, this is like asking a question now, equal, equal. I'll do A equal, equal two. Instead of A is letting A is two, I'm gonna ask is A two? And Python will tell me, oh, it is true. And if I change this to three, it's false because A is two. Um, David has a question. Please, uh, please proceed. Uh, is Python weakly typed? Um, I actually, I don't know what exactly weakly typed mean, but, uh, um, but, but Python has a very, okay. So Python has what is called a, a weak, for example, if you can do a is to. So this is is somewhat weaker assignment. For example, it will be true. And uh, I can see A is int and it's false. Okay. So this A is, I, this is in Python, it's called a weak assignment. For example, you can do true is true, then it's true. And you can do false is true, is not true. It's true. Um, I mean, this is uh, this is some tricky things about Python, but uh, um, but I actually don't know what the uh, what are the weakly typed and strongly typed mean. Um, but this is right here is a, a keyword in Python that uh, weakly compares um, some values. Okay, let's back here. Um, as we can see, um, the equal equal sign actually is, uh, it's sort of like each variable. Okay, so David said it's sort of like each variable needs to have a type set to it, like in C++. Oh, okay. Then Python is, no, it's 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 not like C++. Uh, this Python, uh, Python is weakly typed. You don't have to set, um, to answer David's question, Python is not, uh, uh, strongly typed. You don't have to. For example, you can, you can do another thing. S equals um, David, and you don't have to specify this as a string. Okay. So in uh, in C or C plus plus, you have to specify its type. But uh, uh, if we uh, if we do this, we'll see. Um, it automatically assigns the type. 
So it's easier. It's I would say it's friendlier to、uh, beginners.、Um, we don't have to specify types.、Um, all right, and we can we can do some checking. Like I said.、Um, Will Bender is well. Will said,、uh, but you don't have to explicitly declare the variable type. That's true. For example, I can do more.、Um, if I do a is five, and let's check type of a, Python will tell me or automatically this is a float. And、uh, if I do a is a、uh, uh, seven. And if I do type A, and Python will tell me this is an integer. Okay. So we don't have to declare variable type, and moreover, I can do some fancy things. For example, I can do、uh, um, S1 equals, let's say、uh, S1 equals bracket、uh, A, and uh, um, let's do.、Um, Let's do A and S, and let's see S one. Python will tell me this is a list.、Uh, and if we print S one,、um, it will be something like this. And Python has other variable types. It's called Python has many variable types. For example, we have set.、Um, if we have curly bracket, it's called set. And uh, uh, we can have others. For example, if we have this type of uh,、um, assignment, for example, we can do、um, my name, Shu Hao,、um, and、uh, it's so I'm the instructor today. If we do this, we'll see this is a this is a dictionary. So Python has lots of types, and the thing about Python is we don't have to declare types like、uh, David and Wells. Suggested earlier. So let's continue.、Um, for example, we can check. We can check.、Uh, we we can use uh,、um, equal equal or we can use uh, uh, or using、uh, the keyword is. For example.、Um, if I let.、Uh, um, If I let、uh, dict one equals Chu Hao is instructor, and uh, uh, let's check dict one, and Chu Hao is now a key to、uh, dictionary one. If I check it is、uh, instructor, Python will tell me, oh, it is, it's true, and if I、uh, If I check it, it's a student. Then、uh, it will tell me it's false.、Um, so computer is very good and very fast at these logic checking.、Um, for example, I can I can check. We can check more. We can check one is one. The answer is of course true. All right, and、uh, we can check one is zero. The answer is false. So unlike human.、Um, We sometimes, in our mind,、uh, when we are thinking of one thing, we're saying another. It's it. Computer does not like that. Okay, Com computer does not do something like that. Computer do exactly the instruction human、uh, give them.、Um, for example, here we will see some uh, simple uh, if then checking. So if we type if in the cell, we'll see that the if. The color is changed.、Uh, if we type, if we type simple things,、uh, we, we'll see these are some black letters. So、um, the color is black. But if we type if, it its color change it its color changes, and it becomes boldface letter. So this is a keyword in Python.、Um, So what we have here is, uh, um, let's say, if、uh, one is one, and、uh, um, semicolon, I think this is column. Sorry,、uh, column, and we type en enter, 
And as we can see, uh, this cell will automatically indent four spaces. And then we type here, we print uh, one is one, okay? And then we hit enter. Uh, we do, so uh, we if, if we do, um, let's check another. And if one is zero, then we print one is zero. So what happens is the if condition, if this condition is satisfied, this condition right here, inside this parentheses, if this condition is true, if one is one, then we'll print this message, okay? And this condition is if one is zero, if this condition is satisfied, we'll print one is zero. But apparently one is not zero, we'll print just one message. As we can see, only this message is print. So the if um, is the simplest logic checking in Python. Um, so this this is also it has a it has a I mean technical name. It's called a, a it's called a flow control because it controls the flows. For example, um, let's do another example. Um, another example is uh, called for loops. So if we type for um, again, Python highlighted this keyword and make it both faced for us. So let's do for i in range five and we print i. Let's add a zero. So for i in range zero comma five and column and then we hit enter, we print i. Um, then the Python will print zero to four for us. All right. A range zero to five means every integer that is greater than or equal to zero, but uh, strictly less than five. Okay. So let me add here. Uh, range A to B means, uh, um, means the integer greater than or equal to A, but uh, strictly less than B. Now we're gonna add a control uh, flow control. For example, if I is greater than two, we print I. And keep this in mind, Python is a, Python is a special language. Python uses this kind of indent um, to tell um, the code execution hierarchy. It means uh, if something is indented, it means we execute that first. For example, right here. So the indentation, if, if, I, uh, if I do this, um, Python will complain. Uh, here, print I, it says indentation error expected an indented block. It means I I have to indent right here. You can either type full space or you can press tab key to indent. Press tab to indent. So if I press tab key, which is a right near Q, um, it will indent. And, and let's run this code again. As we can see, it now only prints three and four because if I is not strictly greater than this two, this line of code won't be executed, all right? Only if I is greater than two, um, this line will be executed. This is called a flow control, it means we can tell the computer, for example, uh, we can give, we can let the computer see a thousand images, but only 
For example, we can set if the image represents a cat, we let the computer learn from it. All right. Um, this is the idea. And right now, okay, so we're gonna see some more com complicated code which I wrote. Um, but we, we don't have to know what exactly each line of these code do. Um, but uh, uh, we'll see some results, okay? So let, let me first uh, asking questions. Are everyone uh, following me so far? Is it too difficult? Is it okay? So I'm gonna launch a poll, I guess, um, and poll. Um, Polling, edit. Um, difficulty, anonymous. I'm gonna put this anonymous. Type your question there. Uh, is the material okay so far? Um, difficult. Okay. Uh, easy. Okay, save. So I just launched the poll. Um, and it's anonymous, by the way, so you don't have to um, essentially click Okay, majority think it's okay and easy. So I guess uh, you guys are good. Um, because if someone first see uh, coding, if someone hasn't seen coding before, this must uh, kind of mind blow, but uh, um, okay. Then we'll start some uh, more difficult things um, right now. Um, for example, Python has, we can see these uh, import, uh, keywords. These are some packages, um, software packages. So Python is some language. And uh, uh, it has various software packages written in Python. For example, I uh, this package is uh, what I use most. It's called NumPy. Um, and uh, this one is called Pandas. If we Google Pandas, Let's try to Google Pandas. Um, so it says Python data analysis library, even though uh, it's literally uh, the Pandas. Okay. Um, for example, um, the Pandas is used everywhere. Um, okay. Um, for example, it's used by Two Sigma. Two Sigma is a famous hedge fund. And Anaconda is a famous data science uh, library. And RStudio is some statistics software. Um, I mean, Pandas is pretty good. Uh, it's like a, it's like Microsoft uh, spreadsheet, but uh, uh, in Python, all right? And let's run this uh, cell of code. So it may take like a two seconds. And uh, um, for example, if we type this help, this is also a, um, a keyword in Python. That's, so we import pandas as PD. Right now, uh, our computer sees uh, pandas as PD now. If we type help PD, let's run this uh, cell of code. And uh, um, it prints this help message uh, for pandas. For example, it, it tells us its name is pandas and uh, uh, pandas is a powerful data analysis and manip manipulation. Um, where is pandas stored in computer? David asks us where is uh, pandas stored on the computer? Um, first answer is pandas is not stored on the computer. Um, it's first of all, it's uh, it's not stored on our computer. It's stored in cloud. Right now, we're uh, we're in uh, running we're running Python in uh, a Kaggle cloud. All right. For example, uh, this is our disk and this is our RAM. What we do right here, the import is we load pandas from our hard drive. 
to the RAM. And what we load is we only load some functions. All right. We own, to be precise is if we use um, this Python jargon, what we load is we only, we have only loaded the namespace. For example, uh, right now pandas is loaded in computer, right? Uh, typically, okay. So Anthony says uh, it's typically in that side packages on Linux, not sure on Windows. The answer is yes. So the source code are stored in those directories. Um, but right now, once we have imported them, um, we the technical name is uh, the namespace uh, now has uh, pandas. For example, if we type dir uh, pd, it will tell us uh, what pandas uh, has. These are some built-in method associated with pandas. However, if we just type pandas, Python will complain uh, there does not exist a name called pandas because we kind of gave pandas an alias to be PD. Okay, it says name pandas is not defined, but PD is not PD is defined. Uh, let's output hidden. Let's hidden this output. Okay. And this is the data. This is the data uh, we want to use here. Um, so um, we have three files. The first one is train zip. The second one is test zip. Um, this one is a sample submission. Um, actually, if you run import site, site, get site packages. Ah, okay. That's a good point. We can know everything in this way. Um, um, that's right. Get site packages. Oh, it is stored here. It's uh, it's conda. You're right. Thank you, thank you, Anthony. Um, for example, it tells us uh, in Kaggle. Um, by the way, because uh, the Python in Kaggle is, uh, um, the Python distribution is using Anaconda, so it's uh, showing Conda here. Um, thank you. So for example, right here, uh, we have three files. This one is train, this one is test, and we have a sample submission. Uh, we'll focus on these two files. What this train does is uh, think about so we want to we want to let the computer learn. Think about how we learn, how we prepare for an exam. So our teacher will give us, like before the exam, it it uh, she or he will uh, give us some, let's say, practice exams, and then and and then uh, he or she will post answers. And we'll try those problems. And in the actual exam, uh, we'll try problems we have no idea what the answers are. I mean, before we try it, right? It turns out, right now, we're doing the same thing uh, for the computer. And let's first run these two lines of code. It may take some while. Um, so uh, if it's executing, we will see a little star right here in this cell. And uh, um, apparently the CPU is kind of, you know, the CPU is running and do its job on um, like unzip these compressed images. And once it's, okay, it, it, it's done. So, uh, so it shows 47 uh, instead of a asterisk, then it's down. And right now, uh, let's do this. So if we run this cell, it tells us what files, image files. So if we see these JPEG files, it's uh, um, they, they are all image files. Um, first of all, first of all, uh, what I wanna say is uh, um, the computer can 
does not know, does not see whether an image is a cat or a dog. Okay, even though we name this image a cat, what computer sees are just ones and zeros are uh, representing these image names. Um, it does not actually know the image represent a cat. Uh, first, uh, this cell of code, um, this cell of code, what this cell of code does is we convert, we convert our data into a data frame. All right. Like I said here, like the inventory list in Minecraft, if you have played Minecraft, whoops, my bad. Do I still have everything? Sorry, I, I clicked, I accidentally clicked, um, I accidentally clicked uh, um, back. Um, let, let's see if uh, it's still in the memory. I believe it does. Okay, this is good. Um, what we want to do here, what this uh, cell of code does is we represent cat or dog by numbers. For example, um, we use one to represent the cat. If its file name is a cat, we will see in a moment, it's really a cat in the image. And if um, in the image, there's a dog and we have this category is zero. This is, this is the first key of letting the computer learn. I mean, uh, how to tell cats from dogs is representing abstractly cats and dogs using numbers. Computers are very good at recognizing numbers, but are not uh, so good at uh, recognizing images. So now let's uh, run this uh, cell of code. Essentially, here we just randomly choose one. So by the way, the file names has, uh, if we check, um, if we check the length of a file name, we'll see there are like uh, 25,000 file names. Okay, right. This length means length. It's like how many file names we have. Uh, we have uh, 25,000 images. And here what we do is we randomly choose one image and we plot it. Whoops, load image is not defined, my bad. Um, Okay. Mm. Okay, my bad. Um. All right, load image. Um, right here. I forgot to import load image. Oh, okay, I see. All right, my bad. Um, um, Okay, so now let's add one line of uh, code back on top. Um, so if you guys can type with me, uh, you can type from. If you type Keras, 
uh, Python will uh, end dot, then Python will and press tab. So let, let me repeat um, from Keras dot, then we press tab and uh, we type pre-processing. So we, when we type pre, we can hit tab. And here right now, it will automatically popping up the pre-processing. We just click it um, and then image and dot. Then we type IM, we press tab. We'll have this image right here. And we type import from this package, we import the load image. And then we, we can run this uh, line of code. And after that, I believe it's good. If we do that, um, we can run this line of code. All right, it, it just to show an image, what is like uh, an image. And if we run this cell again, we'll get another image. And uh, uh, so we can run this cell multiple times. As we can see, we're, we're just retrieving some uh, cats or dogs images from our train.zip, this folder. Uh, we have uh, cats and dogs. Okay. So next is we're gonna build some real complicated model. So the this block of code is our model. Uh, can you go up a bit, please? Okay, my bad. So I forgot, I, I think uh, uh, I forgot to add this uh, uh, beforehand. Um, essentially, um, if if we are, um, so we can start a new code cell, we type, we type from, and if we type keras dot, and we hit tab, it will tell us everything Keras has and we type pre-processing and we hit tab and we click pre-processing. Then we hit a uh, dot um, image and we hit tab again. Um, Python will auto complete for us. It's an image and we import load image. So um, this is a, uh, we get this a uh, load image, this helper function for us to load the image right here. Um, and next is we build this model. We import many things uh, and uh, um, so this part is maybe too difficult, but uh, we'll, we'll just uh, um, run this uh, cell of code by clicking right here. And after we do that, oh, Import, okay, I forgot it, my bad. Okay, there is a, oh, I see. So, um, let me check. I wonder if uh, my input is bad. Um, oh, it's, it's okay, okay. Um, so you guys should be okay. Um, but I got, uh, something here. So in your cell, if we uh, execute this cell, we should, uh, view something first. It Kaggle will download data from here. And then it will show this really complicated thing. It says total parameter is 14 million. Uh, everyone see this 14 million? Uh, if uh, you have not uh, seen this, uh, you can type in the chat. So this is essentially our model. And the, the model name is has actually a specific name. It's called BGG16. Um, and uh, um, it has 14, actually 
almost 15. Uh, it has total parameter is almost 15 million parameter. It means uh, these parameter live inside our model. It's think about we have, I don't know, billions of neurons in our head to help us see, hear, and tell which is cat, which is dog. These parameter are doing exactly the same thing for the computer. It's like uh, consisting of computer's eyes and brain and think about that. And uh, um, if we plot model, if we run this line of code, uh, we're gonna see some uh, uh, plots. So these are some uh, mathematical operations. It's pretty much like, so these operations, for example, this this is called Conv2D. Um, it's very much like a, a fly's eyes, okay? So fly has really huge eyes comparing, um, I would say to their body. Like, I don't know, fly has an eye almost say uh, one-tenth of the body. We have our eyes like, uh, I don't know, like a uh, hundreds of our body surface area. Um, so these uh, these are like flies eyes to computer and it can detect like the small details in the images. So let me first collapse this. Uh, I keep getting an error message. Will said, I keep getting an error message. What is the error message? I mean, it's like a, it's a pretty long error message. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Try to put out your internet. Is, is your internet on here? Um, oh, no. Okay. okay. So uh, we have to toggle our internet is on here. Otherwise, uh, you cannot retrieve things. Thank you. My bad. We have to toggle our internet on. I'm not sure if, uh, okay, so um, we have to toggle this on. See if uh, uh, after the internet is in enabled, you guys can retrieve the file from, uh... good. That fixed it. Thank you, Will. Okay. Um, all right. Now, first, let, uh, first we have to process the data so that the model, um, I mean, see the data okay. And what I'm gonna do is to ask you guys and girls to run the following cells below. Um, for example, this one and this one. I'm gonna run this cell and this cell as well. And, uh, um, if we see this message, it means we're in a uh, good position to proceed. It says uh, it found 22,500 validated image uh, file names belong to two classes. So if you haven't seen this message, you can type in the chat so I'll know. Um, we want to run basically uh, this three cells of code. Okay, the first thing we want to do is we want to augment the data. What does augment the data means is we want to we want to let the computer to see different aspect of one data. For example, right here, if we scroll up, uh, we rerun this cell of showing image. We can see this dog, for example, uh, this dog's face is pointing to the left, but somehow the computer is not so smart because uh, if it sees uh, this image of a dog watching towards it, our left, then if we give this computer uh, something, for example, this dog watching to the right, this computer won't recognize it. Um, and what we do, let's scroll down here. And what we do here, this augment, 
augment the data. Please pardon my um, English. What we do here is we. So if we execute it, we will find. First of all, this is the cat image. We flip the cat image and we rotate the cat image a little bit so that no matter what angle. So we let the computer see all of these images of the same cat so that uh, it knows, okay, it doesn't matter which direction this uh, cat faces or which angle this cat head is like lining to, and uh, they are all cat, okay? So if the cat is watching toward the left, it's still a cat. It's, if it is watching toward the right, it's still a cat. And first let's test if our model can recognize it, this image. Let's uh, run this line of code, this uh, cell of code. Um, we found uh, 128 validated image files. And then let's run this cell of code. I I'm gonna uh, ask you guys and girls to run these two cell of code. Um, so this one may take a while if we don't have our accelerator. Um, right now it's not. Um, if you have a GPU, right now Kaggle has GPU, but uh, let's just uh, keep this now. Because if you toggle this GPU, everything will restart. Um, so right now this may take a while. What this cell of code does is um, now it, let, it lets this model see all these images. So right now it shows it has run. Um, to see these images, to see the model can tell which one is cat, which one is dog. And let's let's remember that our cat, we, uh, we give our cat a number right here. Um, if it's a cat, it's one. If it's a dog, it's a zero, all right? So if we run this cell of code, um, it plots like nine images. And if you see this little number right here, it's a value of our model C's, okay? So our model says, this is a zero, it means uh, it's a dog. Apparently it's wrong. Um, this is a zero. It's a dog. It's like every 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 image is a dog. Um, this is because we haven't trained our model. So this is like our model just take, just just let everything to be a dog. It's, so we only get like fifty percent of accuracy. It's like taking a random guess. So right now we see nine images and all nine images are dogs. Apparently this is not because this is a cat. This is a cat. So this should be one. This, these values should be one. Um, this is because we first, we set our model. We haven't trained it yet. Okay. So right now we're going to load this trained model. Um, what this trained model is, is it has seen all these images so that it's it's trained and let's load load it um so did i but it should be fine i got one for all of my oh, oh it's okay um if it's zero so um as long as we use one um to represent our dog or cat, and we use an, another number to represent. So we use one number to represent dog. We use another number to represent cat. Um, if zero and one are flipped, it's okay. Um, but the point is, um, we want to train our model so that it can tell uh, cats from dogs. So now we have loaded. So this model I trained on the Kaggle Cloud. 
uh, using GPU. Um, and now let's use this trained model to predict. And again, it takes it takes a while, and uh, um, so it may take some minute to do it. Um, but let me just uh, scroll up right here. Um, let me explain some more. Um, for example, right here we see nine images, right? And what we did in the cell of code is we feed, we feed these images to our model. So our model outputs a number, which is zero right here. And we'll, oh, it finishes. So right here, it finishes, it shows this uh, number 80 right here. And now let's plot our result. So let's run this, uh, this cell of code. Now we see nine images. As we can see, this becomes one. So it's a cat. So our model tells, oh, this is a cat. This is a cat. This is a cat. This is a cat. This is a dog. This is a dog. This is a cat. This is a cat. And this is a dog. Now, once we have loaded a trained model, okay, I, I trained it like uh, uh, today, this morning, um, but uh, once we have trained our model, it's like trained our computer using all these images. It's like doing homework. David said mine got eight out of nine. It's not bad, but it it's it like like you said, it it has some errors. It's like uh, we learn math through examples. Okay, for example, uh, we we learn in in our high school in our middle school we learn math. Uh, by learning theorems and formulas first. But uh, in machine learning, the computer just got uh, problems and answers. So the computer learn math through um, problems and answers. That, that seven out of nine is normal as well. Um, we, we just randomly, we just randomly uh, choose nine images to show the result eight out of nine seven out of nine are all normal if it's one out of nine it means it's not normal um but uh in general the accuracy uh, on average is a uh, greater than uh, should be greater than 90 percent um so 90 percent of the time if we run this multiple times 90 percent of the time we should get uh, other i mean it right for example let's see um, we have zero, one, zero, one, so it's good. This is zero, 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 and one. Okay, let's see if I can get uh, something that's not correct. So I can see uh, where it goes wrong. Okay, it refuses to give me a wrong answer. Because this is random, so you should get something not so correct. Okay. Why all these images are correct? We should have some things not correct. Okay. Oh, come on. What, what I want to say, uh, my, my point will be sometimes if the image doesn't look like a cat, but it's indeed a cat, uh, then the model will somehow get uh, uh, our prediction wrong. Um, for example, okay, I give up. So, but uh, in the end, we should get a pretty accurate prediction from our model. Um, so dog is zero, cat is one. I think we're good. Okay, and now we'll, we'll move on to learn some of uh, the mathematics behind it. Okay, um, first let's look at this picture. Um, this is an analogy of the data the computer uses. So first we have a scalar, 
And then we have a vector. I don't know what exactly this dog breed is, um, but uh, I've seen this kind of long dog, this real uh, with a long body on on the internet, but I don't know the name of this breed. And we have this uh, tall dog. This seems like a, a very expensive breed. And we have this bulldog, okay, um, which is bulky. And we have four types. It's called a uh, scalar vector matrix and tensor. All right. We so what happens is the computer uses these four types of a mathematical object to represent images. So let's look at scalar. For example, uh, if we have a scalar, it means we have a number. It could be S equals one point something. Okay, this is a scalar. And a vector means we have several numbers. A vector consists of several numbers. For example, if we type V, we can, first of all, we can use a, a list to represent a vector. For example, we can do one, three, five point two. And if we print V, so this is a vector. And what is the tensor? So I'll explain in a moment. And uh, um, for example, um, the stock prices of are, are, are vectors. For example, if we track uh, Google's stock price today, uh, we have the price is six hundred. Tomorrow is six o one, and etc. So this is a vector. And if we have a matrix, a matrix means we increase one more dimension. So for example, this M is. So we have one bracket here. And we have another bracket. For example, this is one, three, and uh, um, eight and nine. Let's print this M. And it is this, all right. Um, so this is a matrix. If we wanna, um, if we wanna view this matrix better, uh, we can use the NumPy package to represented as an array, we let m equals mp. mp means numpy um, dot array m. So we convert this m to a numpy array. We print um, m's type, and then we print what m is. First of all, it says NumPy's type is NumPy's array. This ND means n-dimensional, so we uh, we don't care about that very much. But it basically it converts a matrix to an array, and the first row of this matrix, the one three second row, is uh, um, eight to nine. So right now, let's do this image show. First of all, let let me do this A equals this array. So this array is one, zero, and zero, nine. If we do image show this A, we'll see uh, uh, this block. This essentially everything we see, every image the computer sees, it represents using this kind of a grid. It's called a pixel. It's like uh, we represent something, um, some image by pixel. And each pixel is a number so that our uh, computer can represent. For example, this is a matrix. This is a matrix. And uh, um, using numbers. And let me see if I can uh, image show this M. So we have this M. This M is one and three and eight and nine. And right now, um, I'm having this image. So for example, if it's uh, if it's zero, it's gonna be uh, the color, I believe it's uh, most like the dark color in our spectrum. If the value gets greater, we'll get a lighter color. Okay, this is called a color map. We map like our colors to be numbers. Okay. So we can we can try other values. For example, we can try this is zero and five. 
zero four and uh, uh, let's do two and uh, uh, ten. Okay, and we'll see these. So basically, it's represented this matrix as um, colors. And now let's do uh, is we load um, the Pokemon data set. We load a Pokemon. Okay. So we run. We want to run these uh, um, two cell of code. So we just choose a random Pokemon. Oh, it looks quite fancy. This Pokemon. Um. If you cannot, uh, so if you, if you have run these two cells of code and uh, don't see a Pokemon, you can uh, tell me in the chat. But we should see a Pokemon. Um, but keep this in mind. What we do is uh, this G is we read a Pokemon uh, from this file. We just pick a random Pokemon and we read it as a tensor. So right now I'm going to answer David's question. What is a tensor? Um, it's a tensor that represents this Pokemon. So what is G? G, as we can see, we have multiple brackets um, right here. All right. Um, what happens is G is so if we run this cell of code, um, G have three numbers. For example, if we run M shape, M is a matrix. A matrix has two dimensions. This is the first dimension of a matrix. This is the second dimension of the matrix. If we have a tensor, tensor is like a 3D matrix. Tensor has a third dimension. And the third dimension actually represents the three basic colors computer uses. The three in the last position right here represents the R, G, and B uh, color. So R means red, G means green, and blue. It means we represent every single of our image, every pixel using these three colors. For example, uh, we have uh, red, green, and blue colors. And, and then this G is the tensor. If we want to visualize what a tensor is like, we can just Google tensor. We can just Google tensor. Um, if we click images, this is exactly like the tensor, this one. Uh, for example, so this tensor is like a matrix, but it has multiple pages. Um, it's like we have our exam papers. A single paper is a matrix, and then we stack them together. We get a tensor. So, and this G is a tensor. If we do, so right now, what we can do is uh, we can use index notation. So this is indexing. We can let G1 to be equals. We take column, comma, column, zero. So this one is we only, sh we only take the red channel. If we uh, hit run. And let's uh, let's do image show. So let's do plt image show g1. If we run this cell of code, okay, I see. So the color map, because we have a color map is uh, um,
Let's just do this G1. Okay. So this one only shows the strength in the red color. For example, um, let's copy this G1 right here. Let's check G1's shape. G1 is now only a matrix. It's like we're taking a slice out of a tensor, we get a matrix. If we stack matrices together, we get a tensor. Okay. And so the package we use today is called TensorFlow. Um, what we learned today is essentially TensorFlow 101. It's a simple example how we can use TensorFlow um, to uh, get uh, to do classification. And the second, the, so the second mathematical uh, concept we're going to learn today is uh, is called a uh, feature. And let's uh, load this data set of Pokemon. Uh, if we click run, we basically we load this Pokemon as a pandas data frame. Um, if we run this line of code, it will sample randomly. It will sample randomly um, some Pokemon data, for example. We'll have this Venusaur. It's type one is grass. Type two is poison. Total HP is 60, 625. HP is, what's this total means? I'm not sure what this total means, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming the total means maybe the sum of its total power. So it has HP 80, attack 100, defense 123, special attack is 122, special defense is 120, speed is 80, generation is one, all right? Now, what I'm gonna, gonna explain is if we do not know this Pokemon number three is a Venusaur. By just looking at these attributes, we will know that it's a Venusaur. All right. So let me let me add a remark here. By just looking at a Pokemon's attributes, we will know which Pokemon it is without knowing, my bad, without knowing its name. And this is, this is the key of how computer learns, is the computer will learn to capture these features. So by attributes, we can also, so it has a dedicated name for it. It's called a features. Um, and for example, if we have these combinations of the features for a Pokemon, we know it's a Venusaur. And if we uh, have uh, uh, these attributes, this 90, 45, 30, 30, and 40, we know it's a uh, Shed Ninja, Shed Ninja, okay. And uh, we have all these weird names. So this is how, essentially how computer learns is it learns through extracting features. Um, I think we don't need this. But uh, uh, this is essentially tell us how do we visualize the data. Uh, the SNS is uh, called Seaborn. If you are interested, um, you can Google it afterwards. So it's a nice data science package and I'm using it daily uh, to visualize the data. For example, we have um, one, about 160 something generation one and generation two has a hundred or something. So how do we read these diagrams? And let's drop this. So we run these two lines of code. If we run this line of code, we'll see like how these features are correlated. 
For example, these correlated we shown is HP and the tech. Um, this essentially shows the HP and the tech. We say they are correlated because we see a trend. This trend is the greater the HP is, the greater the attack is. This is how uh, computer learns is it learns some trend, like the correlation between uh, HP and attack. We can change this to, for example, HP and defense. And we will see a trend right here. All right. However, if we do HP and generations, Oops, could not interpret in, um, oh, we, we dropped a generation. Uh, let me, let me see a uh, type two. Type, oops. Let's do type two. Oh, poison. Okay, my bad. Let me do total. How about, uh, let's do speed. So if we do HP and speed, it doesn't have this correlation that much. All right. Um, but, uh, um, so let's wrap up. So essentially, um, that's it for today. Um, to put in summary is, uh, the computer represents data using a vector matrix or tensor. And the computer learn how to tell cats from dog by using features. And lastly, um, our model is called VGG16. If you're interested, you can Google this model. So, I mean, so that's it for today. And uh, um, if you have questions, you're welcome to email me. So uh, my email is uh, scao at ws, wustl um, at edu. So that's it for today. If you have questions, you can type in the chat and uh, um, or you can email me afterwards. Thank you, Anthony. And uh, um, also happy birthday to Will. Happy birthday, Will. Thank you.